All right, well, my name is Jessica, and I am from PetFinder.com. I'm the shelter outreach specialist there. Today we are going to be talking about um, the cutting edge community outreach via social media networking. I'm going to tell you up front, I'm going to be going through a lot of topics. So if you leave here still feeling like you are not completely proficient in Facebook or Twitter, that's okay. I'm just kind of glazing over the importance of it and some basic concepts, but if you if you take anything away from this, is that Google is your friend. And so anything that I cover here that you know, you're know you still not clear on, Google it, and I promise you, you'll find exactly what you're looking for in terms of being able to have a little bit more in-depth training on how to use it. How many people here are on Facebook, professionally or personally? Okay, so you guys know the basics. Anybody on Twitter? Well, a little less, okay. Well, it was kind of interesting this morning when I had the news on because, you know, the whole idea of this topic is how things like smartphones and social media really have changed our society. And I found out today that the terms OMG and LOL have officially made it into the Oxford Dictionary of English. So that makes me wonder if teachers and professors are not going to have to accept that in papers. <laughs> outreach of basically what social media looks like. It's so much more than just Twitter and Facebook. Um, it's YouTube, it's LinkedIn, telephones that are two-way communication now, right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really about two-way communication now versus one-way communication. It wasn't that long ago that we got most of our information by the newspaper. And if we wanted to say something back, we fired off a letter to the editor. Maybe it got printed, maybe it didn't. Um, but this really allows for quick communication exchanges. They are a fast way to promote your pets, publicize your events, share your triumphs. Um, and importantly, they can rally donations and volunteers and emergency help when you need it very fast. We're going to start with the basics. Um, homepage. Uh, does it provide your adoption information and procedures right away? That's not just your pet finder homepage, that's also your the, the homepage of your website. Pets, do they have great photos and creative bios? And community, which is what we're here to talk about today with social networking. Pet photos. These are all examples of photos that I actually found scrolling through the Michigan Facebook pages. What you'll notice about these photos is that they're very up close and personal with the pet. I want you to think, I'm sure most of you here have gone through Pet Finder or beyond your own homepage, typed in <coughs> lab or domestic short hair in your zip code, and seen the list that's populated when you're looking for a pet. One thing to consider is the size of those pictures. I mean, those are tiny little thumbnail pictures. So when you're looking at, when you're taking pictures of your adoptable pets, don't only consider what it looks like online, Consider what it looks like as a teeny tiny thumbnail. Because if I'm going to go through thousands of pictures of chocolate labs, I'm going to click on the one that is more up close. I can see his face in even the tiniest of picture. He's not far away, crouched, terrified in the back of his kennel. Uh, that's not really the one that I'm probably going to want to click on. Pay attention to the details because your doctors do. Do your cats have litter boxes behind them? Is there poop in those litter boxes? Um, I recently saw a picture where a dog was positioned next to a garbage can. Which, that doesn't say something. <laughs> um, and also consider that this is your opportunity to let their personality shine. If I'm looking for a goober little lap kitty that's going to play with me all day, I'm probably going to go for this cat right here. She's in a basket, rolling around, <laughs> being adorable. Granted, I know not all of these cats are goober lap kitties, and that's fine because I believe that there's a personality out there for everybody who wants to adopt. Maybe they want a prim little princess and show her with her little legs crossed and, you know, grooming herself or whatever. You know, it's going to speak to somebody. Ask professionals how they got such great photos. I am willing to bet that every one of you here can get a professional photographer to come in and at least run a workshop on how to take good pictures. And I'll tell you, the best source for that is Craigslist. <coughs> I'm getting married in June and I have planned most of my wedding on Craigslist. I don't have a huge budget, unfortunately. Um, and so I knew that probably there was a photographer out there who had an amazing eye, an amazing gift, but still trying to build his or her portfolio. And I was right. I got the most amazing photographer 
for a fraction of the cost. Um, so consider that, that there may be people out there who are even willing to come in and volunteer their time to take pictures because they're looking to expand their portfolio. You just never know what you can find. So that's a really good resource. Write compelling pet descriptions. I know this can be difficult, especially when you're in a shelter and you're always understaffed and overworked. There's just no way around that. And this is a great time to rely on volunteers, even if their job is to just play with them a little bit and write down descriptions of them. A description sells. If you look at the description of Sweet Little Melanie up here, we find out she's a cuddle muffin. We find out that she laid under the, the bed and slept at the feet of the adoption coordinator, and she's very laid back and calm. This is gonna grab me. If I'm a lazy couch potato, but I want a companion to lay on the couch with me, I'm gonna say this is the dog for me. If I'm a marathon runner, I can very clearly tell from this description, she's not gonna quite jive with my lifestyle. So I know it gets really hard to, to come up with something to say, especially for every pet. And there are a lot of cats, they're terrified in the shelter, they're gonna kinda of have the same personality. A lot of them get a book of adjectives or a thesaurus, learn to say things differently because it's the creativity that will draw people in and keep them interested. Add video. So Petfinder now has the ability to add video to your Pet Finder page of your adoptable pets. Pictures will always be the mainstay, but a video just speaks volumes. It shows their personality and what they're like, and um, it really is just a way to draw people in. Again, time gets limited. This is a perfect opportunity for you to utilize those high school students, those college students, the younger generation grew up learning how to edit video, I swear. Like, they are so good at it. They just grab stuff, they, you know, grab their phones, they get video, they can edit it on their computers. Take advantage of that because they love to do this stuff. Make your homepage tell your story. Include fresh content. Don't, and by content, what I mean is, you know, everything, the, the information that you have up there, the stories that you keep on your, on your, both your pet finder homepage and your, your website's homepage. Um, people come back and look for something new, updates, anything. They don't want to stay on the page because then why would they want to come back to your page? They're just going to see the same old thing. Pet list link remains at the top. I cannot impress this enough. I recently had a um, project with pet finder and I had to go through hundreds and hundreds of pet finder homepages and websites. I was shocked at how hard it was to find the adoptable pet list link in some of those pages. Not only on the pet finder pages where the link is buried at the bottom of the page below tons and tons of, of content, but also on websites. I had to go through so many links and drop down menus to get to some of these adoptable pet pages. I should be able to get to your adoptable pet list on the first page. And on a side note, I should also be able to get to how to donate to you on, a, on the first page. So really, adoptions, donate here. People are getting some fat tax refunds right now. Give them a reason to spend it. <laughs> Give directions to your adoption location. So remember that we have smartphones now, so your website is now mobile. People may literally be on their way to adopt a pet and realize they forgot to get directions, so they're gonna look on your website. That doesn't mean you have to weigh your website down with the directions right there, but at least a link to say click here for directions so people can find it easily. Discuss your needs, a link to a wish list. Do you need bleach, towels, leashes, collars, food? Put it right on the front where people can find it. Educate your doctors before they meet your pets in person. If you don't want that scary looking guy showing up with a chain link ready to adopt a pet from you, put that on there. Maybe not that specifically, but <laughs> <laughs> make it very clear what you expect from your doctors. Do you expect them to be over 18? Do you expect them to either own their home or have landlord permission? Um, you know, do you expect them to go through training classes? Make sure it's very clear the type of a doctors that you're looking for <coughs> right up front so that there's no questions. Saves their time, saves your time. Manage expectations. One of the number one complaints we get from the public is that they don't hear back from you guys. They email, they leave voicemails, they don't hear back. We're busy though, we get that. So put right on there. If they're not gonna hear back from you in 24 hours, let them know. Just say, hey, we're all volunteer based or we're a very you know, high volume facility. You may not hear back from us in 24 hours. Um, 
if sometimes you need a little follow-up, you can say that. If you don't hear back from us in 24 hours, email us again. This way they're at least prepared for it, so by the time they talk to you, they're not cranky, saying, it's been 18 hours, nobody's gotten back to me. They knew that that was going to happen. Oh, and Petfinder has free FTP accounts. If you don't have your own website, or if you want to make Petfinder look a little bit more like your branding and your website, we can offer you expanded space so that your webmaster, or whomever might be donating some, a website to you or donating their time, can actually make it to look more in line with what, what your shelter looks like or your shelter's page looks like. So it's a great way to customize that experience. Here's an example of a home page, and it's using our new template. But if you see, it's a very simple layout. View our adoptable pets is right at the top. Here's their logo, about us. Ideally, what we like to see is what we call all the, all of the information above the fold, meaning you don't have to scroll down to get all of the basic information. It's right in this first page. That ensures that all of the vital information gets to them right away, especially, again, if they're in their cars and looking for that information quickly. And here's an example of a customized homepage. So dogs deserve better, put their logo at the top, they put the colors to match it a little bit better. But again, who we are, news about us, adopting a friend right there. Very simple, clean layout. It's easy to find the information. Tons of text. It's unfortunate, but it's true. We're in a lazy society right now. People are not going to sit there and read through all of your text and all of that information. If anything, they're going to get annoyed and click off your page. Promote your online pets offline. The classics are still true, so don't stop using newsletters or your weekly spots on the, on the TV or the radio, flyers, posters, brochures, t-shirts. Those are all still really important, and if anything, what they do is they get your, your group's name out there so people can go home and Google you and find you online or find your pet finder page. So don't forget about these avenues. And please take advantage of the Petless printer from Petfinder. If you guys want some information, come to my booth afterwards because I actually have a handout on the Petless printer. What you can do from the Petless printer is a couple of things. It automatically pop populates your pet's pictures and the bios you've already written and puts them in a format of a flyer, a cage card, um, a photo list. These are great for your adoption events, your mobile adoption events. Maybe you can't bring all of your pets with you. Print up the ones you weren't able to bring and bring them with you anyways, because that way if somebody's there, maybe they just didn't see a pet there that they really connected with, you can show them what you still have at the shelter. Your volunteers arm them with a stack of brochures and, or flyers and send them out to the grocery store, the laundromat, wherever they can hang those flyers up. Uh, pieces of paper still work. You can also uh, create page cards so that you can't, when you are out at mobile adoption events, you can put the page cards right on there. It's got their pictures, their bio, your contact information. It's all on there for you. So a little bit about social networking and what it encompasses. <coughs> These are just some of the things that are considered social networking, but I'm sure that you guys recognize most of them. Um, Facebook, we all know Facebook. My space dwindling a little bit, unless you're a band or a restaurant. Um, <laughs> Twitter, blogs and blogs, or web logs and video logs, YouTube channels, photo sharing, and e-newsletters. These are all great examples of social media and ways that you can communicate with your communities. Google, like I said, Google's your friend, and it really is the modern dictionary. You can find anything on Google. You can probably find stuff you don't even want to see on Google. Uh, so remember, anytime you have a question, we tend to forget about it, but you can literally Google how to use Facebook or how to use Twitter, and you will get YouTube videos, tutorials that are step-by-step -step and very clear and concise. Communication tools have changed. So now we have smartphones, which I have a little treat for you. So my fiance is a technology junkie. He's just any new tech thing, he's the one that's standing in line at the Apple store, and I'm the one hiding my face. Um, turns out he's kept every cell phone he's ever had, so I don't know if you guys remember this cute thing that we used to carry around in the 90s and some even in the early 2000s, but how many of you now have smartphones? 
So one thing to consider when we get a little nervous about the new ways we can use social media is you guys, we've all gone from this to what we have now. If you guys can learn this, way more difficult than learning social media. We have Netflix and iPads. Can you use, uh, can you network by social media without a smartphone? Absolutely. You have your desktop computer, your laptop. Uh, the phones just make it more immediate. Did you guys hear about the guy who Twittered from uh, his wedding? Literally right after they said I do, he Twittered it. <laughs> so how many of you have an iPhone? Do you guys have the Pet Finder app? Good for you. If you don't, download it. Because again, this is a great way when you're out at mobile adoptions, somebody doesn't see a pet there that they're interested in, you can show them what you have back at your shelter. When you share, make it relevant. So with Facebook, people can hide you if they don't like what you have to say or if you say it too often, or if every post you make is urgent, now! How many of those have we seen? It gets stressful to see that all the time, and, and I've hidden those people. So consider that. You don't want to be that person that's hidden. So consider your message. If you share something for the sake of sharing, it's just extra work for you. Social networking can be a handshake or can literally be making a relationship. These people on Facebook or Twitter are the people that you're cultivating to come into action when you need donations or help during an emergency. Um, so consider how you're interacting with them. And when you get feedback, listen. Um, what are they saying and what does it mean for your organization? I think one of the biggest things we hear about people is being apprehensive to start a Facebook or Twitter page for their organization is they're worried about ugly comments, people making, leaving bad feedback, what have you. That's okay, because the biggest thing about that is how you address that so people see you're managing it. So if you get that ugly comment on Facebook, somebody's angry, there's nothing wrong with commenting back and saying, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Here's my email address. I'd really love to talk to you about this further. If they continue being ugly, there's nothing wrong with deleting those comments, because you don't need that on your page. Um, simple likes means that someone took the time and effort, so you can like, I'm sure you guys know since you all have Facebook, that like means a lot, especially for your organization, because it means they're paying attention. Um, and make sure that the fans who comment, you're capturing them on your email or your mailing newsletter. Are any of you here using email marketing e-newsletters? A few, okay. How many of you are still doing snail mail? Perfect. I say, you know what, keep with the snail mail because you are always going to have that base of people that like to read something over their morning coffee, open that piece of paper, they like getting mail, so don't abandon that. Email marketing, though, is a, is a great way to reach those who are more into actually getting those things in their inbox in their email. And these ones in particular offer either free to start with or free ongoing services. And they make it so easy for you to just, they have the templates all set, just drag and drop, they'll take care of, they'll manage your email list for you. People who wanna unsubscribe, they'll take care of that. How many of you use Craigslist? Yeah, a lot of people are really apprehensive of using Craigslist because there are some freaky people on Craigslist yeah. and you never know what you're going to get. The thing with Craigslist is it really is kind of the modern day penny saver and for as many good, as, as many crazy people as there are on Craigslist, there's a ton of really crazy people on Craigslist. People use it as the message board for their community. Um, so there are some things you can do to utilize Craigslist without, while well, cutting down on some of that negative attention that you might get. So what we recognize, what we what we encourage people to do is if you use the events portion of your pet finder list, or you want to feature one of your pets from your pet finder list, instead of actually typing in the description and adding photos, that you just take a screenshot of your pet finder page and just upload that directly in there so it's a JPEG file. It's not text that you've written. A, it looks more professional, so you're not getting flagged. People know that you're a legitimate group and you're not just a breeder posing as a rescue group. And B, your email address, if you choose to make it not anonymized, is now in a JPEG format rather than a text version, uh, which can help cut down on some of that spam. Not completely, but it does a little bit. 
One thing to consider is that people are just as likely to spam you or can be as likely to spam you or what have you off of any website, including Petfinder. The reason you don't often get as many is because it's viewed as more of a professional page. So if people know that you're a professional organization, they're generally going to be less likely to try and mess with you versus if they think that you're an individual that's just adopting out cute puppies. Anybody here have a blog? Wonderful. Blogs are a fantastic way for you guys to make, put out fresh content without having to update your websites as much. A lot of people, it's a lot easier to, to, to put content in a blog than it is to actually update your website. Most people have webmasters that deal with that. Blogs such as Blogger, WordPress, um, they're a fantastic way you can attach them to your website or have a link from your website to your blog. Um, and it's a great way to always keep people updated. You don't have to have just one person managing the blog. It could be several people in your, in your organization that manages the blog. What's fantastic about blogs, though, is that Google picks them up like they're actual articles, which they are. So if you put a blog post about how to do the perfect TNR program, and somebody Googles, how do I run the best TNR program, your blog will come up, and it drives more traffic to your website. You can email blog articles to your supporters and include them in your newsletters. Um, it's a readily available history of your work, so if you're trying to reference something you guys have done before to an, a, an adopter or they need some sort of re resources or reference, you can just email them the blog post and it's already written down. What do you blog about? Well, in addition to featuring pets, you can also blog about current issues. Is there pending legislation, you know, in your state about certain animal issues that you think is important and people need to get behind, put it on your blog. Have guest bloggers. If you work with a trainer or a groomer who wants to give tips or that kind of a thing, have them write a short blog and put it in there. Um, when I'm getting really lazy with my blog, I do online interviews and I find somebody who's a great expert on something, I type up a list of 20 questions, send it to them, they email it back with their answers, boom, I've got a blog post. So don't feel like you have to sit there constantly trying to think of the perfect thing to say. There's a lot of options to keep your, your blog updated without having to drain yourself from trying to think of words. This is a good example of a blog. And what I wanted to particularly call attention to, not only are they um, putting their featured pets up there, if you look over here to the side in, in other posts, you can see that they um, also feature their events. And right here, they have a link to their available dogs and puppies. The great thing about these is you can post these on your Facebook page, you can put them on your Twitter page, so you, it's just constant cross-promoting between all of the pages. Is anybody here familiar with LinkedIn? Great. LinkedIn is a great opportunity to network with other animal professionals. It's it, kind of like Facebook in the sense that you have connections, much like on Facebook you have friends. But these are truly professional. You post your work history on here, your resume. Um, if people make a change from one organization to another, if you want to see where all the movers and shakers in the business are going, you'll get alerts. Um, but keep in mind that unlike Facebook, where it's a little more casual, choose who you're connected with wisely. If you choose to disassociate yourself from them, it's more of a professional decision now versus, you know, defriending that annoying cheerleader from high school that you just accepted her friend's request to make sure she got fat and ugly. <laughs> so, it's, it's more of a, of a deliberate Facebook or deliberate relationship. Um, it, Create a personal profile with friends. It, it's, I think everybody here kind of gets the general idea of how Facebook works. I usually tell people if you're uncomfortable with it, make your own profile first to get an idea of what it's like. But I get the sense that, is there anybody who's unclear how to use a basic profile? If you have any questions, see me afterwards. I'm happy to answer them. But I think you guys basically get the idea of the format of Facebook. So again, a Facebook profile is for a real person, a Facebook interest page is a like page, and then you can also have cause pages. Um, I did have a question yesterday where somebody, instead of setting up a like page for their organization, they accidentally set up a group page. The difference is, is people can like a like page. A group page, people have to request to be a member. 
Um, and you, that's really limited access for your group. You want people to be able to just join and, and support you. Um, and what I would suggest is if you run into that, create a like page, and then for a week or two straight, just put out a blast every day. Hey, everybody, we're changing pages. Please like our page. Give a link to it, because we're shutting this one down. The people that were paying attention to begin with, they're going to be the ones that are going over there. Those that not, they may have hid you, or they just aren't paying attention anyways. So it's about quality, not quantity. So when you sign up for a page, if you guys haven't yet for your organization, you're going to click create a page, and this is what's going to come up. You're going to click this one right here for company, organization, or institution. Once you do that, it's going to give you the opportunity to designate yourself as a not-for-profit organization. This is a great um, example of the Michigan Humane Society's Facebook page. They're very active on it. As you can see, the first post, help us make page covers for animals in our care. Rally your troops. This is a great way to get help from others in your community. You'll be surprised at the outpour. People really, truly want to help. <laughs> Dodge. So one thing to remember in your, on your pet finder pages is there's these two little buttons and they're automatically there for all of your pets. And if people click those, they can share them either to their Facebook or their Twitter. It takes them to their page automatically, which means you can do that too for your pages as well. If there's a particular pet you want to draw attention to or fundraise for, that's the best way to go about it to give that direct link to that pet. As you can see, the Animal Welfare Society of Southeastern Michigan has made wonderful use of their page. Here you see they're promoting their pets. They're promoting their huge adoption event. So this is a prime example of great use of your Facebook page. Share videos and news articles. This is a sweet little dog who is paraplegic and its owner still takes good care of him. Heartwarming things like that. Don't bum people out constantly. There's going to be those sad stories. But we want to keep things also, people like happy endings. So put those fun little videos on there that make people smile and feel good. And don't forget to fundraise to your pet fun or through Facebook. So this is an a, a, a example of this dealership, Madeline's Nissan, said they partnered with their local shelter and said for every person that likes this our page, the dealer's page, they'll donate a dollar to the shelter, which is a fantastic idea. So do things like that. Get people to donate their birthdays to you. They can put on their Facebook page, instead of giving me a birthday present, I'm donating my birthday to the Humane Society. Here's their link. Please donate that money to them instead. Can I ask you a question? When you said they were donating a dollar for every like, that's just, they look at it after a certain amount of time and right. get the number of the right check, right? So they can say, by the end of midnight on Monday, however many likes we have, that's how many dollars we're donating. Okay, there's nothing else magical about using the tool. That was just a way of no, getting... No, really okay. insanely easy. Okay. Yeah.